What is going on everybody it is your boy nothing but skills and today i'm bringing you guys another division video today's video is going to be focused on my build that you guys saw in my last stand gameplay that i released yesterday now this build can be used in the dark zone as i do use the same exact build in the dark zone now i do run my dark zone build two different ways the first way is this way the same way that i run in last stand the second way i'll be releasing that video later this week so this way that i'm showing you right now can be run in last stand and the dark zone i just wanted to clarify that i do run this same exact build just depending on if I fight two or more players. So if it's around two players, I can run this build three players. Sometimes I still run this build, but once I get to four players, it gets really tough, especially because of the amount of damage I can put out, but the amount of damage that I take in because of my stamina. So we're gonna break down this full build right now. So if we get into the build, you're gonna see my primary firepower is 377,000. That's firearms of 8,007. My toughness is 424,000. That's stamina of 5,224. And my skill power is 88,000. That's electronics of 2,961. So I'm running a six piece nomad set. If you don't know what the six piece does, Set bonus two, 15% health on kill. Set bonus three, Nomad's Resolve grants a constant small amount of healing, allowing the user to regenerate all segments of health bar during combat. That's why Nomad is so good for solo players and so good in 1.8.3 because a lot of our healing was nerfed, right? The drop and pop of the box was nerfed, so we really don't have that burst healing anymore. Most of us don't run electronics like you see here, and that's why the Nomad six piece classify set works really well, and especially now in 1.8.3 because you do regenerate health even during combat set bonus four gives you path of nomad when receiving fatal damage you're instantly healed to full health can incur every four minutes set bonus five gives you an additional 10 percent health on kill so that's already 25 percent health on kill depending on how much stamina you have that you'll get back every time you kill a player you kill an npc so depending how you use this build in last stand or depending how you use this build in the dark zone that really helps out also set bonus five improved nomad resolve increases the amount of healing from nomad resolves nomad resolve Resolve now overheals so when you go into battle you're already going with the overheal so you already have a slight advantage on somebody so when they start fighting you they have to they have to put enough damage on you to drop your overheal and then finally they'll be attacking your health bar but at that same time you're gonna be putting out so much damage with firearms of 8,000 that you're gonna be hitting their health bar so most likely they'll have to heal you can keep firing and then you can see that's how you win a lot of your one-on-one -on -one fights with Nomad and set bonus six now this got nerfed back in 1.8.2, but it still works really good as a solo player. And I still run this in groups too. And the reason why I'll tell you right now, 50% chance to have no cooldown on the path of Nomad when playing solo. So that's great for solo play. I run solo a lot. That's why it's really good for me. But when I do run in a group, I don't mind running this because think about it. Take 60% less damage for 10 seconds after the path of Nomad is triggered. When you do get popped, you'll have that 60% less damage for 10 seconds. And a lot of times you can face tank one, two players when it does proc. So the way that I have this modded is I'm running firearms on my chest piece. The major attribute are exotic damage resilience, health, and ammo capacity. Now I do have exotic damage resilience on the chest piece and the mask, and that's because of Predator's Mark. Now if Predator's Mark wasn't a thing in 1.8.3, I probably could put some skill haste on here or even some health on kill. And then on the mask, I could put some critical hit chance. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance. For the mask, it's World Firearms. It has 11% exotic damage resilience. So I have exotic damage resilience on my chest piece and on my mask. And then the minor attribute is 17% burn resistance. Since a lot of people are running flame towards in 1.8.3, burn resistance is something that you want to start putting more and more on your builds. For the mods, I'm running fire mods with 1% critical hit chance. For the knee pads, it's rolled stamina. The major attribute is critical hit damage. The minor attributes are disorient resistance, shock resistance, and bleed resistance. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance and performance mods with 2% pulse critical hit chance. For the holster, 
The major attribute is 4% critical hit chance. For the mods, I'm running 2% pulse critical hit chance on this build. A lot of times I do run solo, so I am going to run my own pulse versus worried about someone else running a pulse for me. For the gloves, the road firearms, they have 12% assault rifle damage, 6% critical hit chance, and 17% critical damage. Now that is because I am running two lightweight M4s. If I was running an SMG instead of the lightweight M4 as my primary, I will switch out the gloves, put on SMG damage, and then have critical hit chance and critical hit damage. For the backpack, this is where this can change up a little bit depending on your skill level. I'm running firearms. The major attribute is 17.5 stability, and I think 17.5 stability on the lightweight M4 is perfectly fine. I like it. I feel like I can still beam like if I had the 30% striker. Now some of you guys might still have a little bit of trouble with that, so then that's where you might put some stability on the weapon itself. But I think 17.5 stability is a perfect amount for the lightweight M4. And then since I'm running a Nomad set, I have no stability throughout this build, so that's where I can get it. Now I am running a minor attribute of ammo capacity, and that's because I am running two lightweight M4s. So if I was running an SMG and a lightweight M4, I could probably take off the ammo capacity and just put on some type of resistance on here. But since I am running two lightweight M4s, ammo capacity is what I want to have on here. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance and then 2% pulse crit hit chance mods. So for the weapons, I have two lightweight M4s. I have one that I like using at a little bit of distance and then I have a lightweight M4 that I like using when people get in within range. Now there is one talent I would like to switch off on this one that I use for distance and you'll see why right away. So my lightweight M4 has 24% enemy armor damage. 22.4k base damage. This is fully optimized. It has vicious critical hit chances increased by 10% when having more than two segments of health. So that's why it's good because a lot of times if you stay away from a player, you'll stay above that two segments of health and vicious will be active. So I get that 10% extra critical hit chance on top of whatever my build has already plus my pulse. Now the talent that I would like to get rid of is responsive because I want to stay at distance with this gun, right? This one wants to be my distance guns. I've been trying to roll one that doesn't have this. I would like to have deadly on here but I don't have one. If I ever get one that has deadly on here, that's the wood I would like to have on here. So it does have responsive, so I have to be within 10 meters to take full advantage of this weapon. And then competent, weapon damage is increased by 10% for 15 seconds after using a skill. So that's why I do like using this one at distance. So the way I have this modded is I'm running a pro red dot site with 18% critical hit damage, 2.5 critical hit chance, and 6% headshot damage. A loud vent break with 19% critical hit damage, 3% critical hit chance, 5.5 headshot damage. A small grip with 19% critical hit damage, stability, and accuracy, and then extended magazine with magazine size, critical hit chance, and rate of fire. Now for my secondary lightweight M4, it's modded a little bit different, and the talents are different. So the enemy armor damage is the same, the base damage is the same at 22.4k. The talents I have are unforgiving, missing health segments, increase your damage. One missing segment is plus 10% damage. Two missing segments is plus 25% damage. I have deadly critical hit damage is increased by 15%. And then I have responsive damage is increased by 10% when close to 10 meters to target. Now the way I have this one mod is a little bit different because I don't have vicious on this one. So I do want to get a little bit more critical chance. So I want that extra 4% critical chance. So I have this reflex sight with 7.5 critical chance, 4% critical damage and 6% headshot damage. I have a loud vent break with 18% critical damage, 6% headshot damage, 3% critical chance. The small grip with 19% critical hit damage, 2.5 stability, 2% accuracy. And then an extended magazine with magazine size, critical chance, and rate of fire. So if we get into the skills, you're going to see the skills I run with this is a pulse. Because I am running those pulse critical hit chance mods. And if I'm running a regular pulse, the recon pack, it's going to give me 16.5 extra critical hit chance. On top of the critical hit chance I have on my lightweight M4, which I'll show you guys in a second. Now if I know someone else on their team is running a pulse, I'm going to use a scrambler. And it will give me 15% critical hit chance. Now for my secondary, I'm running a booster shot. The booster shot is going to temporarily increase my damage and damage resistance for the affected targets in addition to normal healing effects. So it's only going to heal me for 39,000. I'm not really worried about a heal with this build, right? Because I get health on kill every time I kill an enemy and I have that constant overheal even during combat. Now since I am running solo a lot with this build, whether I'm in last stand or if I'm in the dark zone, I do run a recover link. It's almost like having an extra life on top of whatever lives I get from my procs. For the talents. You have to run Adrenaline nowadays, guys. I highly recommend if you guys aren't running Adrenaline, run Adrenaline. You can run Adrenaline and not have to worry about an immune box because someone puts that Predator Marks Bleed on you, you can pop your med kit, that's 7 seconds of immunity, then you should be able to drop them within those 7 seconds. I've never had an issue with Predator's Mark 1v1. Critical save is key, man. You need to run it. 
Use medkits during low health to increase damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds. I pair that up with precision, and the reason why is because I want to put out a lot of damage, right? So headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds. That increases your critical chance and your critical damage. And then on the move, because you're always moving with Nomad, right? You're never really standing still. Kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 15% for 10 seconds. So if we get into my character and we look at the light wind 4 that has Vicious on there, my critical hit chance with that is already at 33.5%. Every time I pop that recon pulse, that's an additional 16.5%. That puts me at 50% critical hit chance just with my recon pulse. That is amazing with the lightweight M4. Plus my critical hit damage is gonna go up to 115% because of the critical hit damage I get on top of that. So you can see how I'm putting out a lot of critical hit chance and critical hit damage with this build with the lightweight M4. My headshot damage is at 87%. My accuracy is 2%. And my stability is 20%, which is perfect. I think 20% is the minimum you need for lightweight. And my health on kill is 25%. My enemy armor damage is 24%. My exotic damage resilience is at 22%. I always say that having at least 22% exotic damage resilience is the perfect amount for Predator's Mark to give you that type of survivability that you need for the first tick. Bleed resistance is at 33%. Burn resistance at 17%, disorient resistance at 33%, and the shock resistance is at 33%. And that's how I run this build. I run this build in last stand. I run this build in the dark zone. I run it just like this with firearms of 8,000, stamina of 5,224, and electronics of 2,900. And if I'm not running it like this in the dark zone, I do run it one other way in the dark zone, and I'll show you guys a build. It's a little bit more tanky, but I prefer having two options always when running Nomad, especially when you're running solo. So. If you guys are having any issues with this build, let me know in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this build, hit the thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, first time you're watching the video, hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, if you don't see me in last stand, if you don't see me in skirmish, if you don't see me in the dark zone, it's only a matter of time. Nothing but skills out.